Okay, and uh, we have some data here on the computer on what a flight would look like, and I'll, I'll let you kind of run us through this. Okay. Uh, let me uh, turn on our recording so you can see what's going on here on the screen. Great. Okay, so basically we're going to go so, to... So what we have here is a program that displays the telemetry information that you're receiving live during the flight, and what we're going to do right now is replay a telemetry file that we gathered at, at a launch. Boost. And as you can Coast. see, uh, on the screen here, the uh, telemetry is reporting the different states that the rocket goes through. 997 so right now the state is coasting. That's right. So the motor has burned out and we're coasting up towards apogee. So the height's going up and this right. is in meters. Oh. So this is all in metric Max by default. 1,221 meters. So it just reported... 1,216 meters. It just reported that we... Uh, reached Apogee, it reported what the Apogee was, we on drove, and meters. over here at the right, you can see that it's reporting the descent rate, and because this was a drogeless dual-deploy rocket, uh, from Apogee down to the main deployment, it was doing 20-some meters per second, or you know, 75 feet per second, something like that. Okay. And the rest of the display uh, down below there, you can see this is meters. information about the GPS re uh, satellites that the receiver is actually listening to. This is position information about where the rocket is, and this is general information about the rocket. 370 meters. And RSSI up here is the received signal strength indicator that tells May. us uh, how strong the signal is coming from the, the radio. 156 meters. Now, as you see, it just went to main. It deployed the main. As you can see, the descent speed is slowing down, as you'd expect, as the main parachute deploys. Mm -hmm. And it settles down to a very respectable, meters. you know, 20-ish feet per second, something like that. And we had, this is a very successful recovery. And you'll see, meters. the last Rocket data point that we safely. received. Bearing 339 degrees, range 974 meters. I, no I noticed that it talks to you as you're doing this. Is that, wh why is that feature there? Uh, well, you know, um, some people who have built electronic payloads in the past um, have, have found that they, you know, have a choice. They either watch the rocket or they watch the screen. Oh. And my partner and I really like to watch our rockets while they're flying, uh -huh. but having the status information about how things are going is, is so, pretty cool. So you're listening to the computer as you're watching your rocket. We often bring out an amplified speaker and plug it into our notebook computer, and that way not only we, but everyone else on the flight line can be listening to, to what's going flight. on with the rocket during the flight. Let me tell you, it draws a crowd. Uh -huh. um, that kind of, it's a simple little feature, um, took advantage of an open source uh, voice synthesis library, uh -huh. um, and you know it is really neat. It allows you to watch the rocket and yet be listening to the computer tell you what's going okay, on. So the data that comes down, it's not being stored here on the computer, is it? Actually, it is. Yes. Um, you know, there's always the possibility that you have a you know failure in flight, and the rocket you know comes back in ballistically and gets destroyed or something like that. So. This program um, logs all of the telemetry it's receiving over the radio link during flight. But of course, radio is radio. It's not perfect. And so you might lose some packets uh, and so forth. So what we typically do is in addition to the telemetry that was stored from the radio link during flight, after flight, we'll go in either over the radio link or using the USB cable directly and extract the copy of the data that was recorded in the onboard memory, which is usually more complete. Okay, so so the the download might you might lose like you said a couple packets, but you'll have a backup from the flight itself, right. assuming everything works fine. All right, that, that's cool. And then and then you you can also export out a, a KML files for Google Earth, right? That's right. Since we have the GPS information, the combination of the GPS data and the uh, improvements in the altitude position that we get from the barometric sensor allow us to output a KML file. This is a relatively new feature in the code and we're still working on it. But as you can see, uh, we have, this was that same rocket's flight. And uh, during the uh, ascent here, um, there was a period of time where the GPS's understanding of what was going on was a little challenged because of the velocity right after launch. Uh, the colors show the changes of state during the board. Um, this is the, uh, the boost phase when the motor's burning. Is the red. That would be the red. The sort of beige stuff is uh, the fast, where it's going fast enough that uh, we wouldn't want to deploy the chutes there even if we thought we were at Apogee. Uh, that's basically any time we think the rocket's going faster than 200 meters per second or you know, roughly uh, 
two-thirds or three-quarters of the speed of sound. Uh, this yellow longer section is the, um, um, the coast phase that's heading up towards Apogee. I'm not good at driving this. We can use this to bring, yep, okay. So as you can see, it goes over at the top, and then once it hits Apogee, the color changes um, to the blue for descent under Drogue, and then uh, at the very bottom, whoops, went too far, uh, changes green at the main deploy, and that's where it's descending under main. Now, as you can see, this was a this is one of those uh, days that was a gift from the rocket gods. We had almost no wind, and mm -hmm. so Came uh, that down. descent was almost straight down, and we had a very short walk. Uh, you really probably didn't absolutely need uh, GPS to find the rocket that day, uh -huh. um, but once the rocket had landed, we took the latitude and longitude from our telemetry program, put it in our handheld GPS, and just like you would do geocaching, we walked straight to where the rocket was. Okay, so you got that, and then you, you also got the Yegi. I guess you could do direction finding. That's right. Um, in addition to sending the data packets that contain the GPS and other telemetry information, we also um, send every three seconds or so an audio beep. So in the same way that you can do with, uh, you know, Walston or Beeline or other uh, commercial um, tracking transmitters, the radio in here can also be used for radio direction finding your rocket. Um, the combination is really handy because as you noticed, the rocket was still 25 meters above ground when we got our last data packet. Mm -hmm. Once it touched down, it's a low power, you know, digital data link. Usually once it's on the ground, you won't hear it, uh, hear data packets again until you get fairly close to it. But um, the GPS position that's reported is close enough usually to get you within sight of the rocket. But if you're in dense sagebrush or something like that, you can go to where the GPS fix is, and by then you're close enough that you can radio direction find and figure out which sagebush it's buried in. Ah, cool. So that's a lot of stuff for what you get. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll have more. This is this is like our first video on this, right. and then we're gonna we're gonna do a video on how to set all this up and how to configure the rocket and the electronics. And uh, we'll put this on a DVD and we'll include it when you buy your starter set for the, uh, the Telemetrium. 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 Yeah. Okay. My name is Tim Van Milligan and this is B. Dale Garby. Uh, may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.